What's up everyone, it's Dylan here. I wanna do a follow up to my video yesterday where I said there's going to be a huge crash at the end of this bull run. And I wanna explain my, more, my reasoning there and why and my thought process around that so you can better see that, especially on a day like today when things are down, right? Things went down. And I wanna explain why I thought the way I thought. So let's go over here to, let me dive into CoinMarketCap just to show you uh, what's going on here. And so. Yeah, we had a big decrease in the market. Um, you know, Bitcoin went down, everything else collapsed more. So if we go just go here and look at the uh, seven day, uh, 24 hours, Bitcoin's down 5.6%, ETH 6, Binance and everything. It's a similar story for every for all the top, you know, the top blue chips here in the market. And then as you go start, starting out of that top, um, top tier blue chips, ones, especially ones that had a lot of price action over the past few weeks, um, like Terra had been pushing hard. Avalanche remained surprisingly strong. Um, you know, uh, Polkadot actually was doing, was pushing real hard, but then uh, they're down, you know, 10% on Uniswap, right? Nine. So we're looking at almost double, right? You know, a third to uh, double what Bit uh, Bitcoin did in terms of um, price drops, right? So when Bitcoin goes down, so the lesson here is when Bitcoin goes down, the rest of the market follows and typically alts will f crash a lot more, right? They'll fall a lot harder. And this has been true with crypto since the beginning. And so that concept is important. So in a bull market, typically alts will outperform Bitcoin. I mean, for the simple logic that they have a smaller market cap. And so capital flowing in doesn't take as much capital to flow out of something like Bitcoin or some of the bigger Ethereum to then push alts up our capital coming out from the rest of the world, right? So with a smaller market cap, it's easier to raise the percentage gains, really simple. But in during a, and with Bitcoin, since that a trillion, it takes a lot more capital, a lot more energy to actually like move the price up or uh, and, uh, at least percentage wise. So very, very simple. But then in a bear market, what happens when Bitcoin goes down, typically alts correct a lot more. And this is going to happen, right? And it's not just me saying this, it's not just me trying to spread FUD. It's just to bring awareness to the market. And I was watching a video, just like I went back like 10 months and was watching a video by a guy, and I'll, I'll show you his channel later, but Elio Trades, great co uh, content creator, great guy in the crypto space, heavily focused on NFTs and gaming. He has lots of good picks. But like 10 months ago, he was talking about Bitcoin at $30,000 and like these projects that now have like, you know, five to 10 X, um, what he was talking about at 10 months ago. And and at that point in time, that was huge gains. Like that was, the market was really at, at all time highs and a lot of money had flown into that. And that was, like, like I said, 10 months ago. Now things are wild and you know, we never, we don't know. But if you just take that for a second and think about that, right? If the market was at all time highs 10 months ago and you're seeing like, you're seeing a ton of capital flow into even smaller projects. And now those same smaller projects have, you know, 5X and 10X. What that t is telling me and my thought is that, you know, this is a, maybe a glimpse of the future, but we're way overheated, especially on a lot of these smaller projects, a lot of these altcoins and things like that. And when we do have that larger correction, we saw evidence of this over the, over the summer in May, that when that larger correction happened, alts, they crashed by like 80, 90%. And they're going, it's going to happen again. That is inevitable because it'd be silly right, to think that that won't happen again in crypto. There will be crashes and corrections and there will be shakeouts and strong projects will survive. Even if they crash 80, 90%, they'll be able to come back and all the weak projects will get flushed out. That's just gonna happen, especially in this market, right? Um, it's just inevitable. It's inevitable that will happen. And the question is when and how that'll play out. And I think we still have a lot of time to run on this bull run, but I wanted to just show you, this was just an example that was like oddly strange timing when I put out that video yesterday, that, th that this is gonna happen. The reason why, the reason why is because, or at least my opinion is one, because obviously, you know, smaller market caps, it's that same logic that when money gets taken out, it's a larger percentage. Um, so it doesn't take as much. Uh, the frequency at which you can trade cryptos, the fact that we all have our phones, we have our computers, and we can trade 24-7, 365, and a lot of this is retail-driven um, for these smaller smaller projects, so less institutional money, but more retail money, and so retail people are a little more um, thumbing, right? They, they, they react to news a little bit quicker uh, because they just can react on their emotions. They don't have to go through a board or talk to a team or anything like that. They can just click buy and sell um, as they see fit, leverage in the system and all that kind of stuff, but also things like this. It's not just me saying this. So this is uh, Chamath, and he, you know, investor, invested in Solana. I don't know, he's a billionaire guy or whatever. He's got a lot of money. Um, but basically, this video right here, you can go check it out by a guy, Jamie Tree. He does a good, um, he does good uh, kind of clips highlighting what the thought leaders are saying. Um, but basically, he's saying, look, if the smartest people are selling positions that they said they'd never sell, like Jeff Bezos and Elon, then you as an individual investor 
our person, this obviously isn't financial advice. I'm not giving you investment advice. I'm just giving you my opinion and thoughts. You as an individual might need to start thinking about, okay, if these guys are selling out of positions they thought they'd never sell out of, and stock market's at all-time high, crypto's at all-time high, housing is at all-time high, you know, inflation's at all-time high, we're at the all-time highs of all these things. You have to start thinking about it. These guys are, are considering exit strategies for things they never would sell, right? Elon sells, Jeff Bezos sells. It might be prudent to not get too attached or married to your, your positions, to your altcoins, to your, your things that you know will go down more in any sort of bear market, any sort of sell-off, any sort of correction. You know they'll be more impacted by that. So knowing that, what that implies is there's a lot more risk to holding because if these guys start selling or if bigger whales start selling, I know people, clients I have in the crypto space, they're telling me, hey, I've never sold, but now I'm gonna start considering exiting some positions, right? Selling out of certain positions because they've got all these gains and it's wild, but they don't wanna lose all those gains. And so if you're in that position, right? And this is what everyone's saying. Right? It's, it's If you're in that position, if you have life-changing gains, maybe solidify and lock in some of those life-changing gains, right? So that you can come back and then you can just ride off into the sunset or you can, um, you know, reinvest later on when things dip because things are definitely going to dip. Now, who knows? There's always the argument that things are just going to keep skyrocketing up for forever, but what goes up must come down. And while I do believe crypto long-term, while I do believe there's a ton of potential, I do think there's still a ton of volatility, a ton of you know FUD, a ton of rough roads ahead uh, because we're just getting started and it's getting the attention of major players and all that kind of stuff. So anyways, um, it's not just me saying this. Elio Trades, great channel. right? You know, Everyone's predicting the market's about to explode, this parabolic growth top. Um, but then you know they're they always talking about gains and taking profits and entering and exiting positions. If you go listen to his videos, you'll learn some good things from him, um, but you'll also learn that he's talking about how to exit his positions. He's literally saying in almost every video, like how to get in and get out. So all these big time influencers, these people that are putting money in the space, these people are thought leaders for like the, the altcoins and all that kind of stuff in their own way, um, they're all thinking about this, thinking about how to get in, how to get out, when they're gonna get out, so they have this plan in place, and they're communicating that to their audiences. And their audiences will oftentimes listen and follow those, that advice, or at least like have that in their mind. So it's creating a situation where everyone's getting it in their mind that it's all basically like a game of chicken or hot potato, right? Everything's good, everything's groovy, that's why there's so much fear, right? When the market goes down some, the fear goes up because we're like, oh crap, is this the time where everyone starts selling out or not, right? And so it's like everyone looking around the room, you know, just waiting and being like, are, who, are you gonna do something? Are you gonna do something? Are we good? Are we good? Are we good? Like, like that's basically what it's, it's like, and or it feels like. So that's playing out, and so it's gonna happen at some point. At some point in time, someone's gonna drop the potato, and then everyone's gonna run, right? Everyone's gonna take their bags and go, and hopefully be, not be the last bag holder. So I hope that for you, you understand the situation, um, because even as, you know, it's Elio. This is a video by Rob Hall, so go check them out um, right here again on Jamie Tree's channel. But um, you know, we have this bullish optimism, but then he's also saying, he's like, look, like at some point in time, this is a cool, cool insight. He's like, look at, at December, people are going to start, especially institutional hedge, hedge funds are going to start exiting their positions because they need to balance their sheets, right? Or they need to, whatever they, they need to balance their books and like, you know, post a return, positive return. And it's not realized gains unless you actually realize those gains. So they're going to start exiting positions. And so it might go up when I have this spike leading up into December or January, and then you'll have a sell-off, right? And then we have a push higher after that. Um, at least that's what Rob Paul says in this video. Uh, I know he's explicitly said in, in other videos that even though his portfolio is primarily ETH, like he shifted a lot of his investment to ETH because he uh, believes we're in a bear market. And so he's going down the risk curve, but for the, you know, to get the most upside for the amount of risk he's taking on, but he's not married to ETH. He's like, hey, look, I'm, I'll sell out. He's basically has said he'd sell, he'd sell out of ETH if another trade is better because he's actually done that. He's literally done that with, he started out being mostly Bitcoin in his portfolio and he's then sold off of his Bitcoin or reallocated to actually get more ETH. So he's shown that he will, he will move with whatever the uh, market says is the best upside. So knowing that happens, and what I've said is what I said is don't get married to your altcoins because even guys like this, you know, they're they're looking for the opportunities. They're not necessarily looking to be married to a coin, right? Lark Davis, another crypto influencer, just want to point him out. He has got great videos, great insights, um, but he's always talking about taking your profits, right? Securing your bags, taking your profits, all this kind of stuff. You know, exit strategies. So the point of all these guys is that I'm saying like this is what everyone's talking about. This is what they're thinking about. This is what they're saying, and this is what they might be doing. Of course, it might be, uh, you know, watch what I do, not what I say, but they will be taking profits along the way. And they're planning, they're planning to exit because they've been through this. 
they know, and, and we all, if you've been here um, over the past year, if you're new, um, it's good to, to watch these videos and understand. But if you've been here over the past year, you saw what happened in May. Everyone wished they would have gotten out, right? Gotten out of their altcoin positions because some of those altcoins, as I know for myself, haven't even gotten back up to the levels they were then. And so I'm sitting there, I'm like, okay, hopefully this bull run really goes wild so I can finally get out of those positions. But you're losing that opportunity cost. You're stuck in this position with a, with a you know, crypto company that may never come back, right? That hasn't gotten the attention. Um, and so it, it, especially, and it starts to show you the cracks in your strategy. It starts to show you you're a little, you took on a little bit too more risk or you're a little bit naive or the project you invested in, you didn't actually invest because you believed in the project long-term or the fundamentals. You invest on a whim because you thought it could make you money, right? It's totally fine if you're doing that. Just know that's why you're doing it and don't, uh, mix up your strategies. Don't don't have a long term strategy for a short term project. Uh, so you always got to keep that in mind. And of course, you know the so this is what everyone's saying about all the altcoins and all this stuff. Is, notice I showed like you know Chamath is in altcoins, Elon and Jeff they're not in altcoins, but they're representative of the uh, guys who would never sell who are selling. So you got to you got to think about that. Um, Elio's all altcoins and NFTs. Rao Paul altcoin ETH, right? That that's his. He's um, versus Bitcoin. Lark is, uh, you know, he's got a little bit of everything, but he definitely leans ETH and altcoins. So he's in that world. So all of these guys that are in that altcoin world are literally saying they're going to sell their bags, right? They're in it for the money. They're going to sell their bags. Cool. Yeah, they like the tech. Yeah, but they, they want to get those gains. They want to lock in those gains. And that means selling, right? Unless they got into the positions where it's really, really small. So that's the other advice here. Or their uh, non-financial advice is like, look, if you got in a position, a project when it was like under $10 million or what whatnot, like, and it's now up to 100, 100 million or, or whatnot, you can take your profits, but you don't need to sell out of all your coins because you're in a really good position. But if you're coming in the market now and you're buying at all-time highs, you're in a more, a more precarious position because chances are the market will correct below those all-time highs and you'll be at losses. So if you're going to enter a, a, a thing at an all-time high, you probably will, and I don't necessarily recommend this, but you probably will want to do it for a shorter-term trade right, versus a longer-term hold because if the market corrects, it'll probably go down at a level below that all-time high, right? unless you're doing Bitcoin. Bitcoin is the only exception for this. Right? And this is Michael Saylor. He's like, why you should never sell your, sell your Bitcoin? He hasn't sold any. He's bought billions of dollars worth. And most people in the Bitcoin community kind of have this ethos is once it goes into Bitcoin, it goes into cold storage or whatever, and it never gets sold, right? They're not planning on ever selling their Bitcoin. They're just, they're just like kind of using that as their piggy bank. And so this is one of the only assets that if it does go down, that you don't, you can, I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of sucks, but you still hold the same amount of Bitcoin. And I guess, you, if you still hold the same amount, like it's it's all right, but like you don't have to worry because Bitcoin's going to keep coming back, right? As long as the crypto market is alive, and based upon where Bitcoin is at right now, Bitcoin's at you know a trillion dollars or one point one trillion dollars of market cap. People like almost a, like a certain like with a hundred percent certain, not hundred percent, but like ninety nine point nine percent certainty believe Bitcoin will at least hit the market cap of gold. So even if Bitcoin dips and you buy it at sixty thousand dollars, like. Anyone in the space is going to be like, that, you're fine. Like, And also they say, never buy Bitcoin if you plan on holding it less than four years, less than 10 years, right? Hold it forever is, is a lot of that. So Bitcoin is more of a longer term uh, trade and play in this marketplace. And so you have to understand, you know, what buckets you're actually um, putting your money into, right? Are you tra are you saving, which would be Bitcoin? Are you just trying to save money and hold over time and not really worry about these day-to-day, week-to-week market fluctuations and you're looking for the long-term with the least amount of risk and most amount of upside? It's probably going to be Bitcoin. Um, then if you're looking to invest, right? So you want to take on a little bit more risk and you're trying to, see, to invest in early projects, early type of ecosystems, then you might look at, go down the risk curve and go into things like your layer one smart contract platforms, Ethereum, Solana, Cardano, right? Polkadot. That'd be a little bit more investing. You're investing in solid projects with solid teams, with solid funding, with, with clear roadmaps and goals, right? That have the potential to capture some market share from the typical fiat banking, whatever uh, marketplace, right? So that'd be kind of investing. And then if you want to speculate, that's when you just kind of throw a dart and be like this one, or that's when you go all the way down this list, right? You know, and you're like, let's go down, you go down to the list and then, Hey, let's go to page 75 and let's pick out which one of these like, um, random coins that have like, that just got launched yesterday will potentially like, let's, like, let's, let's pick a Basenji coin, another dog coin, right? And say maybe Basenji coin will just go to the moon because people will start liking Basenjis. I think they're cool dogs, but, uh, um, you know, that'd be speculating. You're purely gambling. And if you want to do that, you can have fun, but you're not basing it on any sort of technical analysis, fundamentals or anything like that. You're just trying to base it on, will the hype train stop here? And 
it has. It has. Uh, their story of the guy who put 8000 in and now is worth over a billion dollars. Uh, so that's pretty wild, but it, it, it can happen. So anyways, just to conclude this video because they're going kind of long is – Always be careful. Um, always understand what's going on. Understand that people will sell other positions, right? People will take profits. Alt crash harder than Bitcoin. Alt will crash. This market will correct at some point in time. Will it correct fully now? No, I think we're still in a bullish uh, bullish uptrend. So I think there's still a lot, a lot of time, a lot of fun to uh, to play around in this market. But just be careful and don't get married too married to these coins. Always reevaluate and always evaluate where your positions are at, how much risk you're willing to take. Always do your own research. Don't take my advice. It's just my opinion from some guy on the internet. Um, but go out there, learn, and implement. So that's it for now. I'll catch you in the next one. Make sure you smash that like button, hit subscribe, and leave your comments below. Peace.